Well, hi class. This video is going to help with 3.1. I got my, I had my mask on when I was going to start this. I was like, oh yeah, don't need it for recording a lesson. Okay, so 3.1. I did, I have a guided note because I'm teaching this class live. So a printed, printable note. It's pretty close to the PowerPoint. Either one would be exactly almost the same. Um, but I did post it in Canvas if you wanted to have exactly what I have right here. All right, so what is a measure of the center? Okay, so how do I get the center? It's like the average, it's the idea of the middle of my data about where everybody is. And we know that, um, let me move my face, that a measure of center is a value at the center or the middle of our data. So the main way that we find that center, or the main way, I guess I should say, the main way that we all think of is the mean. And how, again, do I find the mean? The mean is the set of data, is the measure of the center found by adding all the data values and dividing by the total number of data. So it's a center, and we get it by adding and dividing. So why do we use the mean? So sample means drawn from the same population. So if I have a big population and I have a couple different samples, um, their means tend to vary very little. So if I have a couple samples, they all pretty much have the same mean. The mean uses every single data value. Um, a disadvantage of the mean is it, if you have an extrema, that's an outlier, it can really change the value of your mean. So we have to have other methods than the mean because if I have an outlier, it's going to throw the mean off. And the, what they say is it's not resistant. So let's define resistant. Resistant is a statistic, is resistant if it's presence of ex if the presence man, let me re let me just start that over a statistic is resistant if the presence of an extreme value or outlier does not change its value or at least not very much so this one is not resistant outliers really change your mean i love the example of um, incomes so if we have one person that lives in nevada or not nevada <laughs> not Nevada, in Wyoming that makes a ton of money, if we include their billions of dollars they make with everybody else, it's going to make our incomes look really high. That outlier will change our middle or our average income. So the notation's a little bit different. So we have um, this kind of like fancy E, and that means to add something up. That means the sum of a data value. So when we use that, we means add up stuff. X typically means the actual data value. So if I'm talking income, if that person makes 10 billion, then their data value is 10 billion. If you have me in there, it's a way less than 10 billion. We'll just say I make 10,000. Um, that would be my data value. N represents the number of data values in your sample. Capital M, reps, capital N represents the entire population. Just telling you, you don't see capital N hardly ever. We will see N, and you need to know it is the number in our sample. So if I go to do the mean, I add up all my values, and I divide by how many were in it. And this is the mean of a sample. If I want the mean of an entire, and the X bar does mean mean, and you should see that on your graphing calculator, in Excel, in StatCrunch, I think, they all use that symbol. This one also means mean, but that symbol means the mean of the entire population, and it's found by adding up all the data values in your entire population and dividing by how many were in your population. Okay, that's symbols. All right, here's my big caution. Never use the term average when you're referring to a measure of center. Now, then I say that, but what does Excel cause or use for mean? Average. So if you're in Microsoft Excel and you want the mean, you don't type mean, you type average. 
which is silly because average just means the middle and it could be the median, the mode, the mean, the mid-range, like any of the ways to find the center. So the word average is often used for the mean, but it is sometimes used for other measures of center. The term average is not used by statisticians. So let's go ahead and find the mean. So question one here. So find the mean. So what am I going to do? So this is uh, data speeds for Verizon. I am going to add up all these data points. So I don't, doesn't matter to me what we use. So 38 clear, 38.5 plus 55.6, point six, point six um, plus 22.4 plus 14.1. Um, plus 23.1, and I get 153.7, okay? And there's one, two, three, four, five numbers. So we divide by five, and I get an average of about 30.74. Okay? I use the word average. I got the mean of 30.74. Add them up, divide by how many there are. So what is another way to find the average or the middle or the center is the median. So remember the median is when you put your data set in order, increasing or decreasing, and you find the middle value. So the book's def definition, the median of the data set is a measure of the center. That is the middle value when the original data values are arranged in order. Okay, so what is our issue with this one is what if you, you know, don't have an exact middle, then you have to take the mean or add and divide by two of the two middles. But if we look at this, to find the median, sort your data. That's the biggest pain, but we already looked how to sort our data in, in um, not Canvas, in um, StatCrunch, so you can sort your data in technology, and then if the number of data is odd, then you will have an exact middle number. Great, that's our median. If the number of data values is even, the median, then you find the middle number, like put a line that's going to cut you exactly in half, and then those two numbers you add and divide by two. Okay. What are the properties of a median? The properties of a median does not change by large amounts when we include just a few extreme values. So the me median is resistant. If I have a lot of outliers in my data, the median is a better choice. The median does not directly use every single data value, which is something to know. Okay. So here's our example. What's the median of um, these numbers here? Well, we're going to have to put those numbers in order. So what is our smallest number there? Um, what, 14.1? Okay, what's our next smallest number? 22.4? And then 23.1, um, then the 38.5, then the 55.6. I find this to be the biggest pain when you're doing a median. So use technology if you have lots of numbers. And then we have an exact middle number <clears throat> because it was odd, there are only five, and it's 23.1. So our median is 23.1. Okay, so what if I now have one, two, three, four, five, six data? Again, let's put these in order. So 14.1, um, and then we could cross them out if you want as we go through, whatever. And then 22.4, and then 23.1, and then 24.5, and then 38.5 and 55.6. So on this one, I see three and three. So this splits my data in half, and I need the average of these two numbers. So 23, oops, 
23.1 plus 24.5 is 47. So I'm going to show that just because. So it's 23.1 plus 24.5 divided by 2. So this would be 47.6 divided by 2, which is about 23.8. So there's our median if you have odd versus even. All right, what is the next central way to find the middle? Would be our mode. So what is our mode? The mode of a data set is a central value, is the values. I, I think I typed up my own definition. That's okay. It occurs the most or has the greatest frequency. Maybe I didn't. So what is the mode again? It occurs the most, has the largest frequency. So um, you could have no modes if there's no numbers that repeat. You could have more than one mode if there's a couple groups of numbers. Um, so that makes the mode a little bit more of a pain. So here are um, a couple points about a mode. When two data values occur with the same greatest frequency, each one is a mode, and the data set is called bimodal. So if I have two modes with the same greatest frequency, then it's called bimodal. When there is more than two data values which occur with the same greatest frequency, each is a mode, and we say it's multimodal. So maybe we have three, maybe we have four, maybe we have five modes. At some point, like most textbooks say after three, like you're bimodal at three, you're multimodal at four, we just say no mode. Like it's too many modes. When the data has no values that repeat themselves, we say no mode. Or if there starts to be a lot of modes, we say no mode. Again, the go-to is usually three. So if you have four modes, then we don't, we just say no mode. I can't remember exactly where your textbook stops. It might just say multimodal. It makes sense to say no though. What are the properties? A mode can be found with quantitative or qualitative data. So we can find it with numbers. We can also find it with colors. Um, so mode is our only way to find the middle of quantitative qualitative data. <laughs> say it wrong. So we can use it with both. Quantitative and qualitative, but specifically qualitative. Um, a data set can have no mode. We just said that, one mode or multi-modes. So let's find the mode of the speeds. Oh, sprint data speeds. What is the mode of this data set? Well, I can see that the point three happens three times and nothing else repeats itself, so the mode is going to be 0.3. Okay, so what if this is our data set? What's the mode on this one? Well, let's see, 2, 1.5 repeats itself, 2 repeats itself, 7, 6, 5, that's it. So we have two modes, 1.5, so it's bimodal, and 2 and we call it bimodal. Okay, so we have two modes on that one. And here's my last example. Every single number is different, no mode. So can you see why the mode is not very good? Okay, it's great for qualitative, but why is the mode not very good? because it's the numbers that repeat. Like, what if I have two data values at the very bottom that repeat and every other data is different, then my mode might be way off the center. It may not be very accurate. So we usually, that's why when people do the average, they usually refer to the mean or the median because the mode isn't as accurate. But that's what the mode is. Last one, okay. So mid-range is one that we don't usually talk about on ways to find the center, but it's actually the quickest, the easiest way to find the center. So what we do for mid-range um, is 
halfway between the max and min values of the original data set. So we take the highest number and the lowest number and we add them and divide by two. There's the middle, okay? So I have a little diagram, mid-range. Highest plus lowest divided by two. How quick is that? So mid-range, super easy, that's why we like it. Um, the properties, because it only uses the max and min, it is very sensitive to extremes. So it is not resistant. If you use the lowest and the highest, and this the lowest was like, um, you know, one of our outliers way off, then, excuse my God, then the mid range is also way off of our data. It is very easy to compute. That's a property. That's a good property. And the mid range helps us reinforce the very important point that there are several different ways to find the center of a data. There are, we have four that we just went over. All right, so my next two examples are, oh, let's do an example of the mid-range, sorry. So mid-range right here of this data set. So we have to find the lowest number, which is 14.1, plus the highest number, which is 55.6, divide that by two. I put those in, you can add them either way, because I put them different than the way I did the problem before, but you can add either direction. I did max plus min on the other one, basically. So this is gonna be 69.7 divided by two. So the middle is about 34.85, which we have done a couple times and they've all been in the 30s, so same data. All right. Let's look at which measure of center should I use for the following. So number one, if I'm doing income of every single person in Wyoming, should I use the mean, the median, the mode, or the mid-range? What would be the best thought? I think the best one would be median because there are gonna be people who make no money and there's gonna be people who make a ton. Who's that, Kanye West that lives in Cody? Actually, we have other people like Ledoux and some other people in, in Wyoming that make a lot of money as well. What is the best way for me to calculate your grade in a course? Probably with weighted means, but a mean, adding up all the points you earned and dividing. So the mean is probably the best way to do a grade. What's the best way to find the average eye color, the center of eye color? The only way, mode. A quantitative data set that has a couple outliers, what's the best way? Not the mean, not the mid-range. I didn't even have one for mid-range, really. I could do the mid-range of your grade, highest, lowest, divide by two. Hope you don't miss an assignment. Um, so this one is median. That's what I really want you to think of when I think of, I have a data set and it has, it's quantitative, addable, right, numbers, and it has outliers. Median is the best. I didn't have one for, for mid-range, that's okay. Okay, so what if I wanna find the mean from a frequency distribution? So here, if I have a frequency distribution or frequency table and I want to find the mean, then what I can do is I can times the F times the X. That's the number of frequencies times the value of that row and divide by the total number of frequencies. Okay, if you don't have an exact value in your frequency table, like it doesn't go 10, 11, 12, it has a category, a class, then you can use the midpoint of the class as your X value, which is why I'm going to show this next example. Um, I don't want you to see this part yet. All right, it's the answer. So if we look at this, this is that same McDonald's data we've looked at a bunch. I know that the times are between this and I have 11 of them, but I don't have the actual times. So don't, it wasn't like 11 data were at 75, right? It, it wasn't that way. So 
we have to use the midpoint. So I'm going to take the midpoint. So I add those two and divide by two. So the midpoint is 99.5. So 75, maybe I'll write that in here. 75 plus 124 divided by two equals this. So 75 plus 124 divided by two is gonna give me 99.5. That's our midpoint, we've done that before. And then what I do for this one is I'm assuming those 11 values are around the midpoint and that's gonna give me this 1,094. Now, sometimes this would have been an exact value and the frequency was 11, so you just times them straight across. Sometimes I have to use the midpoint. So I do that for all of these. I get all of these values. So basically, I'm saying there are 11 numbers at this, 24 numbers at 149.5, 10 numbers at this, three at this, two at this, and then I have to add up all these numbers after I times, okay? And I have to add up all my frequencies and I have to divide them to get the mean. So you can do the mean from a frequency table. You just have to times across, add, add the row of frequencies, divide. That is a mean. You could do the median also. Um, a little harder, but you have to add up. I have 50 points. You would have to add till you're at about halfway through, which is 25. So if I look, 11 plus 24. So 11 plus 24 is 35. So the mean, median, excuse me, is going to be at the 25, so it's going to be in this category right here. So I could guess it at about 149.5, but I don't have actual values. So you could count, use the counts to get the 25th number, and, and then you'd be around the middle. Okay, this one is hard because I have the categories again, instead of an exact value. But you could do the median with those two. I don't think you have one like that. Oh, I love this example. Weighted means, this is exactly how I do your grades. So weighted means is when a different X data values um, are assigned different weights. So our data values are assigned different weights. That's a weighted mean. So your grade for my class is a weighted mean. Just so you know, it's a weighted grade. All right, so Another great example of weights is your grade point average. So I'll, this is our formula, write it down, but I'll show you how it works. So again, we're adding up the weights times the X is divided by the total weights, but it makes more sense in an example. I go to college, my final grades are, I got an A in three credits, I got an A in four credits, a B in three credits, a C in three, and I didn't show up to weight training. So I got an F in my one credit weight training class. The grade system assigns points as a four, obviously for A, that's how you have a 4.0. A B is three, a C is two, a D is one, and an F is zero. Let's calculate out her grade point average. Here is, one, two, three, let me check this out. Here is kind of the idea. I made a little chart of this, so this is a little bit off my little note sheet, but that's fine. As I said, okay, so credits, she took three, she got an A, and an A is worth four points. Four credits, she got an A, it's worth four points. Three, B, three points. Three credits, C, two points. One credit of an F, a zero points. Then my W times X is my weight times my credits. So basically I have 12, three times four is 12, four times four is 16, three times three is nine, three times two is six, one times zero is zero. These are my W times X, and the formula says to add those up, some of those. So the W times X, if I add these all up, I get 43. Then I have to add up my total credits that I took, and that one is 14. So my points are 43, my, my credits are 40, 14, and the mean is found by dividing those. So this person at a 3.07 or a 3.1 GPA. 
Now the F didn't bring them down as much because it was in a one credit course and I had an A in four, five, six, seven of those credits, right? So there you go. How, this is how you can find your GPA with weighted grades. All right, so this section, mean, median, mode. Let's take a second and I will show you StatCrunch. Um, hold on, I'm not sure if you could see what I just put on there. So I'm gonna go back to basic, share my screen, share. Okay, I think you can see this. I'll see when I record. I'm 90% I'm sure. So in Stack Crunch, if I put in data, maybe I'll put in that one set of data that we kept looking at. Where's that one? Oh, 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 the 14. Okay, so I'm going to put in 38.5, 55.6, oops, no plus, and 22.4, um, 14.1, and 23.1. So I can go to stat summary statistics of a column, and I want to do one variable because that's the column I am calling, and I'm going to kind of go out of this. So remember, this is the box of what you want. So I'm doing it of one variable. This one's our mean. I'm going to hit now control shift and I can click anything else I want in here. So do I want to know how many numbers there are? Sure. Um, oops, I'm, I'm not scrolling down. So scroll down. I want the median. Oops, nope. I just want shift control median mean. Well, it's wanting to do all of them. Maybe it's just control, shift, there we go. So just control. So mean, median, IQR, skewness, mode. Mean, median, mode, compute. Mean, median, no mode. There you go, it does it for you. And in there, in there, um, we have so many options. I just want you to be aware, this is where you go for variance. This is standard deviation. This is your standard error, your range, your, your lowest, your highest, your IQRs for the box plots, okay? Um, and if you ever just wanna add something up, that's our in, our in value. There's five of those, it's five. Is there a number of data? Not add them up exactly, but add them up is some. It probably is in there. Does it have some? Ta-da. If I want to add up the actual data, compute, there's your sum. All right, that's how you do it in SatCrunch. Let me know if you need help.